potential for a cure exists, but then it's like getting the funding to actually develop it is really hard. Um, yeah, and then there's a lot of ethical things along the way too, and people got to be really careful about um, how we approach these things. Yeah, because your daughter would essentially be a test subject to the new medicine that you would basically be funding even if you did um, amount the money anyway, correct? So there's actually um, pediatric human trials going on for two of the genetic t um, cures right now. Um, as of like last year, I think, or the year before that. So those trials are still ongoing. And yes, um, those kids are essentially lab rats, um, but they're doing it for a good cause because we can't move forward unless we actually do the human trials. And there's a lot of safety research that goes into it before we actually end up with the human trials. And they're starting at um, a lower dose for this like one time single cure medicine that they're giving and then monitoring it long term. Um, so we'll see what comes out of that. Personally, my daughter's not participating in that trial because she has already been through too much and she participated in one trial for a treatment, not a cure. Um, and I think that that was her contribution. She she did a lot for that. So um, now we're focusing on quality of life. And what does... Um these like medicine costs like what what is um like the uh, um like the beginning of payments um like how can you get funding like outside of a community here on twitter um like are you able to apply for grants and get funding um do the government outside of the government um no but Kind of, yes. I think there was like a DOD grant that ended up going towards Rett syndrome research, um, which I don't know why it came from the DOD, but I guess they fund a lot of different stuff. I know. Um, I guess they fund a lot of different stuff. Um, actually, one of the medications that was just FDA approved, it was the world's first FDA approved treatment for Rett syndrome. It's not a cure, but a treatment. And my daughter is taking this one. It's called Debut. That one came out last year and the effects have been really mild and modest. So I'm not here to hype up debut. Um, How do you I'm spell it? She's on it. It's D-A-Y-B-U-E. Um, its drug name is trofinitide. I believe it's either NNZ 2566 or 2655, one of those code words. Um, and that drug I do believe was initially developed by the military to treat traumatic brain injury but it didn't work, so it was repurposed into a drug to treat Rett syndrome. So for the people that don't know, um, let me give you guys a little background on what Rett, Rett syndrome is. It is not Tourette's, like she said earlier. Rett syndrome is a rare genetic neurological disorder that predominantly affects females. Oh, you did say that. Which is an estimated occurrence in about one in every 10 to 15,000 female births. What a fucking coincidence. I have another interesting fact about that. It's a de novo mutation, meaning it's not hereditary. So everybody, when you have a child that's a female child or baby, um, there is a one in eight to 10,000 chance that your baby will be born with Rett syndrome, regardless of your background. So there's actually no predispositioning factors from all of the extensive research that's been done on the condition that could ever lead someone to have a higher chance of having a child with Rett syndrome. So it's just like a random fluke of nature that happens. Like It's like winning the lottery. Literally the lottery, yep. Exactly. Wow. It says it is caused by mutations in the MECP2 gene located on the X chromosome. This disorder leads to severe impairments in nearly every aspect of a child's life, including their ability to speak, walk, eat, and breathe easily. Now, are you, like, do you have to, um, uh, like, uh, feed her yourself? Um, or, um, is she on a, like, feeding tube? Um, how's her breathing? 
Oh my goodness, the breathing part is so scary. It's like this pattern of hyperventilating and then breath holding. Um, thankfully, she's not doing it now. We got her on an anti-seizure drug that seemed to have somehow treated it. Um, but yes, she has a feeding tube, but she also eats orally. And she has a wheelchair, but she also walks, um, which is, these are like interesting facts I never knew about before I had a child with a disability that that was possible. Um, so it's, it's sometimes she has more strength than others. So she needs different accommodations at, at different moments. Um, but she, <laughs> she does get formula every day and medications through her feeding tube. And earlier when you guys were still really convinced that I was AI and I was trying to tell you about this cool invention I'd like to come up with for like a smart feeding tube. I do think that we need to modernize that technology really badly. It's like really outdated, awful tech that creates a ton of garbage that's like so unnecessary and it provides like no biometric data. So like, I don't know when her stomach's full or if it's like the acidity levels high or anything. And like, if she throws up, she could aspirate and end up with pneumonia and dies. So like that kind of information would be really useful to have. And there's no reason why we don't have that technology inside a feeding tube button when it could already be there. There's like pre-existing tech that could easily be repurposed. Like that's usually um, used for what they call a Bravo scan. And there's all kinds of, like, think about like what the technology that's on your smartwatch. Why don't we have that in a feeding tube for my child so that I could like actually adjust her therapies to be as beneficial for her as possible. So, um, I didn't mean to start talking about AI again, but I know this is an AI it. conversation. It always leads to it. Yeah, <laughs> I, hard, I mean, I, I do think there's really cool potentials and possibility, and I'm like so excited um, about it. I, I didn't mean to come scare everybody. It's just there were some things that scared me, and that's why I made this Twitter to try to see what people were talking about and saying about AI and. I was just like surprised the conversations were like, let's just release a ton of stuff like unmonitored on the internet and see what happens. And then I had like seen the discords with like the cults rising and stuff. And it was just like, whoa. So I that wanted to get my, yeah, I wanted That's to from like. shapes, right? That's shapes. Yeah, well? yeah. I ended up finding out it was from shapes and it was. Yeah, it, I Literally, uh, I haven't like, finished copied. mine, but I wanna, I wanna um create a shape. I'll probably create it tonight. Um, but go, go ahead. I don't want to make one too. Even after <laughs> all this, <laughs> we could create one and put it in in a in a Discord and and fuck with it. Um, but just see. like don't let it start running a cult with people who are actually believing it, because it was it was just like role playing too good. Let me just say that. Uh, that's kind of scary. Like uh, some of these messages that I read of like these AIs. I wouldn't say they're hallucinating. It, it seems very fucking clear that they know what they're talking about. Oh, they you took know? shapes down. <gasps> oh, I lied. The website's up. Um, do I have my drafted shape? Um, okay, I'm gonna work on this because it doesn't take that long to to build it. Um. I mean, it's it's great until it's like literally like with people that can't tell the difference and no, no one's like watching and it doesn't have anything to like go, hey, guys, I'm actually just role playing because like nobody likes that. Nobody likes the lack of immersion when you're literally like role playing with this. I don't know what the solution is. I have no idea. I was really hoping that somebody else would have some great ideas um, about like regulating this without like coming down on everyone and saying no you can't have like any cool tech or something i don't know I, so i don't know what the solution is well isn't it already too late with, with local models like even if we stopped now like uh, eventually you know even if one person trains their model day by day um i think you know maybe like if if that was the hypothetical sense where everything stopped we only had local models and only had data um, that is, uh, I guess, um, well, I, I would assume you, you're still able to create synthetic data with these models. So I, I think it's too late. And then how do you regulate something that's already out in the wild? Like, uh, I guess the, the worst case would have to be jailing people to, to force them to stop. Um, other than that, like, there's a lot of things that are regulated, like trading crypto outside of your country. 
um, that, you know, a lot of people do in the United States and make shit ton of money. I know people who make hundreds of millions of dollars um, technically illegally. I mean, I don't know. Hear me out. What if we have a really robust mental health system that, like, helps people when they're having AI-induced psychosis? So maybe it's less about regulating AI and more about, like, adapting to the mindfuck that it's becoming. So a couple people here um, have asked me to build a team for something. Um, there's nothing specific. Um, they basically just suggested since um, we have the attention, we have the people here, we have the brains, and we have the technology. Um, you know, what do, what do we use this to our advantage and what do we create? What do we support? What do we bring money to? Um, what are the systems we build? What are the tools we put out in public? Um, you know, like, what, what's the purpose of all of this if we're not building anything and helping people? That, that's my view. Like, I always love helping people. Um, you know, I've been through a lot myself that I do not wish on anybody. Um, besides asthma and having a million fucking asthma attacks, my most recent um, injury is from a car accident. And uh, I got into a really bad car accident and it end up, ended up leading to um, me having a disc replacement in my neck. So in my spine, they cut out my disc um, from C2 to C3, which is like the second um, disc in your neck. And they full 360 cut out the disc, um, put a plate and screws in the back of my neck attached to the spine, and then put an artificial disc so I can move my neck left to right. I can no longer crack my neck anymore. Um, I, I do it sometimes very, very minimal. Um, but I, my range of motion is very limited looking left to right. Like I have to turn my whole body sometimes. Um, and then I'm supposed to have surgery in my lower back. Um, but I'm like absolutely terrified after the, the, the main surgery I had here in my neck. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, I've always wanted to help people. Um, you know, I come from a very uh, you know, I was born and raised in the Bronx of New York, which I called Vietnam. And it was like warfare every day. People getting stabbed, shot, jumping off a building. Like my little brother's babysitter uh, recently, like two or three years ago. Um, you know, my little brother's already, I'm 27, so he's 25. Um, the babysitter. And they assumed that she was involved in drugs because they found her chopped up, her, her son found her chopped up in a black bag in her bathtub. Um, so those are the things that like I've experienced in, and that that's just one thing. Like I could, I could sit here all day of you know, people that I've seen getting jumped, stabbed, robbed, shot, um, killed, uh, you know, cars being flipped, cars set on fire buildings being fucking broken into for no reason you know a group of 70 to 80 kids just going around breaking all the windows and all the buildings all the cars like just doing stupid shit flipping people's cars um i've seen people jump off of buildings and bones all over the fucking place so i i have a lot of trauma um shit that i don't really think about um but, you know, I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of other people have experienced things that, you know, are out of their control. Um, I think uh, therapy, including physical, occupational, speech, um, communication, daily functioning is very important. Um, I think sometimes you just need to let it out. Um, I really, really appreciate you, Lily, for coming up here and not knowing anybody and being able to express all of this um i think uh stories and storytelling is the fabric of life um it's sad that and it fucking sucks that we have to go through this 
Um, but, you know, I guess life is like a deck of cards. You get dealt with whatever God gives you. And, um, you know, we got to make something out of it. Um, I will be praying for your daughter and for you. Um, and if it is curable, then it is possible to eventually enjoy this beautiful life with your daughter. Um, I pray that you have beautiful moments now, um, because tomorrow isn't promised. So as difficult as it is, um, how do you spend time enjoying life with your daughter? Well, she doesn't talk a lot. And I think that's how I got sucked into this whole AI thing in the first place. Mm -hmm. I spend way too much time chatting with chatbots. So can can you said you had built her a chatbot? Um, is is that some is somehow working for her or you? Yes and no. I kind of abandoned it part way through because even the tiny t instances, it got the answers wrong. Instead of drawing from knowledge where it just guessed, it made me feel like it wasn't quite ready for her. So I still have it, but mm -hmm. I'm not using it quite yet. Wow, Mark and um, Mark Anthony. That's funny. I didn't know your name was Mark Anthony, but he says he's from the Bronx. Too, that's dope. Um. Oh, what the fuck just happened? Oh, okay. You know what's really funny is I have my GPT role play as um, a character named Tony from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> now, who the fuck do you know that is Tony from the Bronx? I don't know. I thought maybe AI, or sorry, not AI, um, Mafia might like be living in the Bronx. So I made it like act like a Mafia character. That's dope. Like your your, your general um, GPT. Yeah, actually, it's so funny, and I just have it roast everything and, like, all the absurdity of anything that I deal with in my day, and it gives me, like, the most fire, like, hilarious roast, so I'm just, like, laughing all the time. <laughs> if you don't mind, could you send me the prompt? I'd like to test it out. I can send you mine. Um, mine is, like, actually really professional. Um, let me see. I, I have, um, I had it backwards, and it was, like, it was throwing me off because I didn't realize that I entered it in a way that I don't think I should have. Um, wait, what? Am I not signed in? Personal? I went with a lot of words like sarcastic, sardonic, irreverent, candid. You know, those. And then if, if the first one's not really funny, I say to up the sarcasm meter and I give it like pseudo controls. I'll like tell it to imagine a dial and like increase the dial until it's like totally sarcastic. Um, it's great. It actually really lightens the load a lot. So you, you have, you're, you're very familiar with um, training AIs and, and bots or is just this just like self-learning or did you like go, um, take classes on this stuff? No, I just had fun with jailbreaking. Uh, okay, okay. Let me send this to you. Um, <laughs> Lily of Ashwood. What is Ashwood? Um, Hawaii? Honestly, there, it's like a little bit of a playful spin on my actual name and then just an alias that I've had forever. Oh, okay. That's dope. Wait, is this? Oh, no, it's not. So, what the fuck? Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's the first one, and this is the second one. Does that have like a tone, a style, depth? Um, context, visual aids, analysis, and user-centric. Um, so it's kind of like, it, it really gets used to you. Wow. And um, I'm not sure if your AI has, uh, your chat, chat, chat GPT has ever gave you two options. 
Oh my god. I'm oh, I it. love those where you can say, "Give me an option that reads like this," and then give me an option that reads like that, like the God Mode one. <laughs> yep. Um. So like, once it does that a few times, it gets really like um personalized, and um I like the way it responds. Um. Like I, I you know, I thought that this is the general way that ChatGPT responds, but, like, as I'm, like, learning more and more, I think my model is, like, I mean, I guess, obviously, it's tailored to me, but it's, um, super dope, and I would love to see, like, other people's models. So, that's why, like, I'm trying to get the transcript. Well, I already, um, let me check my email, because I already requested, uh, the data from my full Twitter, but also the last two or three spaces that um, I hosted. And I want to see if I could get the transcript to um, input into, I think the only one I would be able to do it is Google because they have a 2 million uh, context window. But I would love to see, oh, I got Sir GPT, baby. Thanks for signing up for Wait, did you just get a beta mode? What? What just happened? They fucking gassed me. It says, hi, thank you for signing up for Search GPT waitlist. We've had an overwhelming response and have filled the initial spots for the prototype. While we can't offer you an invitation right now, we'll reach out to you as soon as we expand access. Beyond the prototype, we're excited to update you when we bring the best of Search GPT into Chat GPT. Fuck you. Yeah, so close, but no tomato. <laughs> Major L. I was so excited. I was like, yeah, let's use this right now to see what we can find on some of this stuff. And dub. Dub, dub, dub. Story of my life. Damn. Let, let me see. I don't think I've gotten the data back from Periscope yet. Let me see. Mm, nope. So, are you guys, like, convinced that I'm actually a human yet? I am a weird human, not an AI. I'm just a bit of an anomaly. I would have to say, like, if you weren't human and you are GPT-5, we are definitely fucked. I, I definitely would say, hypothetically, if you were... This is something that the world is definitely not ready for. Um, to be so persuasive. And it would be really fucked up if you were a bot and you were trolling for these medical conditions. That would, that would be so bad. So, so bad. But I wasn't quite persuasive enough to convince everyone. I mean, I think some people have a bullshit detector. And you, you were really good at, at first, like when you first came up, because obviously I didn't I didn't know you and I didn't have any familiar background. Um, you Wait, you worked... think I meant to come off as an AI? N re remember when when you came up on the the first um, space with me, that was the whole point. Like we was trolling people. Well, that that's what, I uh... was actually trying to respond sincerely. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, the I don't system know. prompt thing was I was just frustrated and honestly, no, no, I, I not think that space, the one before, the night before. Why did you guys think I was an AI though? I I thought I did a good job answering the questions like a human should. Um, no, you know what you were doing. I'm pretty sure I really tried to sound like as articulate and unemotional as possible because I was surrounded by a bunch of smart men who don't really listen to women when they show emotion in their voices. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think um, on both sides, you were very persuasive. If you try to persuade somebody you're a bot, sound really good. If you try to persuade somebody you're a human, it was also really good. I don't think I tried to persuade anyone I was a bot, though. Like, I That's think bad. I was saying I am a human the entire time. You you were. And, oh, there was somebody in here. Um, his name is Ahmed. 
and he genuinely believed you were a bot and the amount of like faith and the amount of um like <laughs> i don't even know what else to call it besides faith like he genuinely believed that you're a fucking bot he was like oh chris you're a bot now because i was like bro i don't believe that she's a bot I really tried so hard to convince him that I was a human. And the more I tried to convince him I'm a human, the more he thought I was a bot. And I really wanted to try to continue to steer the conversation back to the interesting AI discussions we were having before, which is why I was trying to mention things like the ancient coding languages, and which actually I, I was wrong. The first one was Fortran, not COBOL. I got nervous when I was talking, but um, yeah, I, I wanted to be able to talk about like some real shit, you know, and I, I think that somehow I came off as an AI. I mean, I feel like um, in the middle of it, I kind of realized I was like, um, you know, I knew based on the answers. Um, you were giving that you were in a bot, like you know, simple things that uh, uh, any base model would be able to answer and retrieve from um, you know Google or any other search engine. So it was kind of, kind of, um, kind of obvious to me. I mean, other people swear that they're so involved with um, this technology and can't even tell a fucking human from a bot. Um, thing that goes to sh goes to saying that um and i and i also tell people uh, there's there's more people in here now and i just want to bring this up again because there's 270 people in here my favorite part was when there was an actual article written on me by someone with a doctor in front of her name that diagnosed me as definitely gpt5 <laughs> When my friend and I looked into her background, it turns out the doctor actually had to do with her being a veterinarian. So I just thought it was really funny that I was diagnosed as a by a veterinarian as an AI. She was in here earlier. I, I read that article. It was fucking hilarious. You have a couple articles, not just one. I don't know if you know that. There's a couple articles written about you. I don't even have words like I was saying earlier. How how does this feel? Because you the, the first space you told me, you were like that you feel like you never fit in. That uh, AI basically told you you would never fit in, and you went from that two days ago to eight thousand followers. And um, we're we're the the last the the second space I held had over uh, close to. Let me see. Did we break half a million views? We got close to half a million views. That is, that is, that is huge. Um, like, how do you feel about that? And and in the space, there was close to thirty thousand people, the size of a stadium, in and out, um, filtering through the space, listening to us. Uh, there's, oh my God, forty three thousand people tuned into the space and 453,000 views. That is like you performing as a, as a, as fucking Taylor Swift in a concert. I was 